welcome to the Keys to Miami. I'm here with Tyler Wagner from Authors Unite, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we have been talking, what, six months now? Yeah, I don't know. Brother, we started. Yeah. I reached out to you because I was trying to finish a book. Mm -hmm. um, and then I invited you on my podcast. That's kind of how it all got started. And I learned yeah. about you, I think, through Instagram is how I found yeah, you. Yeah, it was Instagram, yeah. Um, and, I mean, basically you run a, run a business that you help people become best-selling authors, right? Yeah. That's the easiest way to sum it up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a big part of it. Yeah. For sure. It, elaborate more on just, like, how yeah. you do it, what you do. So basically we help people, we meet them where they're at. So if they just have a book idea, we can help them ghostwrite the book. We can do the publishing, editing, the distribution to the bookstores. And then most of our revenue though comes from the marketing side. Cause what I realized about nine years ago when I got into the business was that like 99.9% .9 of publishers don't do marketing for their authors. So it kind of just clicked for me. I was like, if I can master that side of the business, then all I have to do is build relationships with the publishers and I won't really have competition and you know, a referral sale is way easier than a, yeah, than a direct sale. For sure. So that's, that's what we do. We do handle the publishing. It's just, I'd say 80, 90% of our business is on the book marketing side. Yeah. And you were saying that you got into that because you were, you were writing a book for yourself at the time, right? That yeah. was like how this all came about. Yeah. So I'll give you the backstory is I, so I'm two years into college. I read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, big entrepreneur book that a lot of people I think have read and it just changed my life. Like I, I decided to drop out of school and I wanted to be a public speaker. And um, basically what I realized from a lot of successful public speakers, they were all best-selling authors. So I kind of was like, okay, I'm a 20 year old dropout, 80 grand in debt, no expertise. <laughs> Who's going to pay me to speak? In fact, they might pay me to like leave their area. Yeah. <laughs> so then I was like, I'm going to write a book, which is not in my nature. Like I'm an extrovert to the core. I am not like sit in a room by myself type of person. Like I get antsy. I can't do it. Yeah. So I'm not, I took a lot of Adderall at that time. In my life. <laughs> 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 I was fresh out of college. Yeah, I had some yeah, 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 for sure. And um, so that helped with the focusing and I wrote a book. It became Amazon bestseller. And I'm sure you're aware of this. Like nine years ago, organically like Facebook and stuff, your reach was way further. Oh yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm from a small town, hour North of Philadelphia and you know a lot of people in my town think i'm going down this bad path because I, I dropped out so they're like what's tyler up to and then six months later it's like best-selling author and literally i posted a few posts about it and i got hundreds of uh messages on uh, facebook and they were like dude how did you do this like i've been wanting to write a book so i help a few people for free and i get testimonials they got the same results as i did and then it just really clicked to me that like almost everybody I know wants to write a book. Yeah. And I was like, we have a business here. So I, I kind of fell into it and then I went all in on it because in all honesty, I was kind of desperate because the public speaking was starting to make some money, but not enough to like really live yeah, off of. Yeah. Um, and then this came up and I was like, oh wow, I can help people with books. I can make a good living from this. Yeah. And and you were, I mean, you talked about the public speaking and the book thing kind of just go together, right? Like yeah. it's, kind of like your business card to become a public speaker, right? Like most For people sure. don't write a book always just because they think they have this great book. They want to get launch themselves into that. And that's kind of the chink in the yeah. armor or the, you know, the easy way to get in. It, it, it is. And I, for me, I, although I'm very good at like these type of conversations, I, because it's just natural to me, the public speaking, I actually get a little nervous when it's just me yeah. in front of a group. So that's why too, I think I had done like 15 talks. I was getting paid anywhere from one to three grand for a talk. Really? And, and the way I structured it actually, and I, I wasn't, I didn't plan it this way, but the book I wrote, it's called Conference Crushing. So it's about how to network at conferences. Oh, wow. Because that's what I felt like I knew how to do. So I, I wrote that. And then what I started to do is reach out to conference coordinators and say, I'll give everybody in your audience a free copy of this. Let me like open up for you. And it worked because it, it was like 17 principles on how to network effectively at events. Wow. And so either way, it just like worked perfectly to get it in front of a mass audience because I would talk for free too sometimes here and there. Yeah. But I, in all honesty, I was just like, I didn't get into that flow. I feel like speakers sometimes, they just keep speaking and it becomes very natural, like no nerves or anything. Yeah. And for me, I was getting nerves every time. So I was yeah. like, I kind of like this laptop lifestyle. So yeah. that, it kind of forced me to transition more into that. Yeah. And let's, let's break down because yeah. you were telling me when we talked was 
that people that know know that Amazon is kind of the easy way to get to, but the other ones, y- yeah. you kind of have to have, I don't know, the, the relationships to get in and even get listed, and, and, and if some people For don't sure. even know that. So talk For about that For the bestseller list? Yeah. So there's really five major ones. So there's Amazon, Barnes & Noble, USA Today, Wall Street, and New York Times. Um, we, we do campaigns for the first four. We are actually, we're working on a New York times right now for somebody. It's kind of like a beta. You, you can't guarantee New York times because it's actually considered to be an opinion piece. And that's where, uh, what you were saying is really, you need to be published by a traditional publisher like Harper Collins, Penguin, or, um, a Simon Schuster or something like that. It's, it's not like a said requirement, but it's kind of like an unknown requirement. Um, and also the New York Times is, they have, actually have it on their website, they are considered an opinion piece. So even though we could generate you the sales necessary to hit that list, just from like, it could be a political thing. Like it's, I think it's very obvious for everybody now, New York Times leans to the left. So if it's known that you're an author and you wrote a book and you're on the right, you could miss the list. I think Grant Cardone actually is an example of this. He really? sold... Yeah, there was like, and, um, I can't remember the exact book it was, but he sold like 30,000 plus copies in a week, which is plenty to hit the list. And there was another book that only sold 5,000, and that book hit and his missed. And so because it just he's shows more of a, he leans a certain I, way. Well. I don't know if that was exactly why, but I think it was part of the equation. Yeah. That's, so um, either way, NYT is just, it, it's kind of who you know kind of political and it's about who you're published under. Yeah. Now the other four, they actually are pure algorithms based on sales. So Amazon is an hourly algorithm. So that's why it's the easiest to hit and it's categorical. So, you know, you, depending on the category, if you sell like 20 copies of a book in one hour, you could actually hit number one in a very easy category. Um, if you wanted to hit number one in like all of nonfiction, that would be like a thousand books in a day, something like that. Yeah. Um, Barnes and Noble, very similar to Amazon, and then USA Today and Wall Street, their weekly lists from Sunday to Saturday, and typically you need like seven to fifteen thousand sales to hit those, and they need to be diversified sales. So some on Amazon, some on Barnes and Noble, and some on Kobo. Yeah. And um, that that's how you would hit those. And then you're printed in the Wall Street paper. If you get top fifty on USA Today, you're printed in that one. And really, the benefit, like USA Today, Wall Street, and NYT, those are the originals. So like those, the mainstream media respects those the most. Amazon and Barnes and Noble, you know, because the people who know they're they're gameable. You know, you can't really seven thousand sales. You can't really game that. But 20 sales in a day, you know, if you have a decent network or a friend group, you yeah. can game that one. So, you know, regardless, I say you're a bestseller no matter which one you hit. But if you're really trying to go far with it and get mainstream media attention, you need those top three yeah. to get it. And you were saying that you have packages starting at five all the way to $250,000 yeah. depending on everything yeah. that they need. Can you sell me what's the difference between a 5,000 and a 250 just to kind of give people an idea? Yeah. So, so 5,000s are done for you publishing. So that's everything from final draft to uh, book in hand and distribution to the stores. So that's like book cover, the formatting. But that's not uh, five grand, right? Yeah, yeah, that one's five, five grand. Five. Oh, okay. Um, and that's the, uh, so like hardcover, paperback, ebook on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and everywhere. Um, and like ISBN copy, all the little details to like finish your book. The Amazon bestseller is 7,500 and then Barnes and Noble's 15 grand, Wall Street's 50K. The 250K that you're talking about, it, that would be our NYT. Until we're working with a beta person, until we really feel comfortable, I don't even try to sell it. Like when people get on the phone with me and they want it, I'm like, look, we can't guarantee it. These other four we can. I don't even want that karma in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, just do the 50. Please. Yeah, so it's more 5 to 50. It's five kind to of your average package. For sure. And that doesn't include any ghostwriting. That's just you have a book, you're oh, ready yeah. to publish, you're ready to go to market, and I help you get out there and get you, yeah. get you the best seller. The, and ghostwriting and editing is typically in between there. Th- those ones are custom, right? Because it just depends on like length of the book and how much work it needs. Yeah. But – I'd say like your average editing project is going to be anywhere from like five to 15. And then your average ghost writing is going to be like 
25 to 75 like it can go a little thousand yeah, yeah. yeah it's ghost not hundred twenty thousand it, it, it could be a like i have some ghost writers that charge a hundred and the reason it, it's more about their portfolio so like some of my ghost writers have written books for others that have hit the nyt because these are like pretty famous people and they had the right um back end i suppose yeah. you could say to hit it so now that that's in their portfolio, their price went from twenty to a hundred, real like really fast. Yeah. Um, but you know, you can get a very good ghostwriter for like twenty five grand. Yeah. And so, what would you say anyone that's trying to write a book or they think they want to do that? What's the what's the things they should do and start and the steps they should take? Uh, so you want to focus on the story. So where I see a lot of people mess up on the nonfiction side is they focus so much on like talking to their direct target customer of like you're here i can get you here here's step one through ten which is from an actionable standpoint it makes sense and it works but a book really has no chance of traveling if there's no story like if there's no emotional connection so i always say you know the content of the book should be 90 percent or more story with the value of like the step-by-step -step stuff uh, sprinkled into it and a prime example of a book that did this is it's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Uh, I think he was like a Navy SEAL and it's like a 14 hour audio book, New York Times, multiple millions of copies sold. And literally, I can't really tell you a single like thing that it like taught me directly. It was just that the story was so riveting that it like the stuff that he went through it like made you realize how much just of like a wimp you are <laughs> you know so so there was value yeah. i just mean it wasn't like direct like do this do that it was yeah. just like dude i like he ran like 200 miles or something and he kept going he had he got kidney failure while running and he still finished the race wow. like shit like that was in this book yeah. and you just start to think like i run six miles in the morning and i'm like dying after three and I, my kidneys are fine <laughs> so i'm like yeah. this guy like i'm a freaking yeah. Wimp or whatever. yeah so um so the story though is what made that catch fire um so so yeah that's what i'd say and then also you want to plan that marketing before so a lot of people where they, and we could still work with them, but it's like they come to us when the book's finished and they haven't even thought about the marketing, right? Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, you could have been doing marketing six months in advance. One of the ways is to build like a, a Facebook group and just document behind the scenes of the process because there's a stat the New York Times came out with 81% of people feel they have a book in them. So like, even if they're not interested in your topic, a lot of people will engage you in that behind the scenes type of group because they want to watch how you're doing the writing, publishing and marketing phase. Wow. And then if you start that six months in advance, I've had clients that have gotten thousands of people in a group. And then when they go to market it, they have thousands of people that feel like they're a part of the book because they've been through with you through the whole journey. Yeah. And then they all buy it and then you hit bestseller without having to pay me anything. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So because me and you are, are have discussed yeah. a book that I've kind of I would say eighty percent had ghosts written. I've got something yeah, there. Yeah, it's kind of like and a you were saying like I'm a kind of a perfect candidate because I've got a lot of that done, but I haven't done enough yet to where you can't take it, nurture it, and yeah. make it run. In, in personal, just sharing my thing, how would you describe what you would do with me where we're at? I mean, we don't have to get into the numbers, yeah. but just what we've discussed. So what I would do and, and what we kind of started is I sent it to my editing team and I basically was like, hey, look, here's the situation what because it was kind of like a hybrid, you know, like you came yeah. to us with some stuff, but it wasn't like a full rough yeah, draft. Yeah. So there's going to be some rewriting involved, but it is going to be also a lot of editing and you're going to have to have some conversation like with the, with the writers. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's really what it is. It's, it's a hybrid of first we need to get a rough draft finished. So that's going to require some communication and like restructuring. And then once that's done, then we'll just have a full editing team go in and like crystallize everything. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, so, so far it's a good episode. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would want to mention specifically? Um, I guess if you want, we could talk about like how, because I think it's really helpful for all businesses is like how with the LinkedIn stuff, like how we've really scaled the business. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I, I it's fun for me to talk about. I it. mean, Just, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I use LinkedIn mostly because I go after specific target audiences. Like I have yeah. very specific campaigns that I know if I get that person, I know it's gonna work immediately. So I use the AI to target plumbers. 
and the yeah. owners of plumbing business. So nationally, that's what I do. And then locally, I do um, Miami clients, more boutique stuff. Okay. But you're using it for publishers, right? Yeah, so like publishers. So what I found with LinkedIn, and obviously it's working for you yeah, though, yeah, to for, be, because a plumber is like a, for a sure. client. Yeah, for you, right? B2B, yeah. So I, um, what I just found is like most people on LinkedIn, they're using it wrong. Like I'm sure you get these messages. They're like real long, direct sales pitch. And like I, I don't even read them because I have hundreds of them. I don't have time to do it. Yeah. So what I use is a simple message. It just says potential collaboration as the subject line. Hey, their name. I noticed we both work with authors. There might be ways we can collaborate. Yeah. And it just kind of leaves them hanging. It's like curiosity's built yeah. in. Do you use yeah. a CRM? Uh, I use Pipe Drive. Okay. So that's how I organize all my. So I started things. using Keep. Oh, and how is that, dude? I, dude, I love the it. automation in it. Really? Because okay. once you plug in a list, you can set up like an automated campaign that just runs from step one, step two, step three. So if they open it, you don't respond. If you do this, they do that. And like, it's really intricate and it's really inexpensive. I'm spending maybe 120 bucks a month on it. I've got like a thousand plumbers that every time I upload the lead, it like automatically sends like, okay, I took it from LinkedIn. It says, hey, we connected on LinkedIn, blah, 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 sends them a video. Yeah. And then like a week later, sends them another thing. And like the open rate is crazy. Dude, I yeah. have to look into that because I've seen Keep and I know Infusionsoft. Like, it, it, that so right? Infusionsoft, Keep is a lighter version of it because okay. I'm a smaller boutique business. Yeah. I don't need all the bells and whistles that Infusionsoft is. Yeah. Not that you can't do both, but Keep is just a little bit more less version of it. Okay. A little less expensive and a little easier to work with. Yeah. The automation is really good in there. I might have to look because Pipedrive does have some automation. It, it keeps things organized, but... The reason I saw, I've seen multiple ads for Keep, and like I actually, when I first got into internet marketing, my first um, tool I used was Infusionsoft. Really? And I even hired somebody from Infusionsoft to manage it for me. Like I was, you know, I forget what it was. It was like six grand up front. And when you're first starting out, I was like 21 years old. I was like, six grand was a lot for me then. It was six grand, and then it was a monthly like thousand. And dude, even with somebody from their team helping, I still couldn't figure the freaking thing out. Yeah, yeah. I so, mean, I've only figured out the broadcast so and the and the and the automation, but that's enough for me. Yeah, yeah. Just to that's have so my drip campaigns every week. Yeah. Someone being tough. It just it's worth it, you know. For sure, and it has un limitless capability. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not speaking bad about it. It was just like for me, I needed something simpler, and that's actually what drove me to, then I went to ClickFunnels, yeah. and I was like, oh, this works for my brain, like I can figure this out. Yeah, 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 um, and, and have you used ClickFunnels for Facebook? What do you use ClickFunnels for? So, actually, so once I got rid of Infusionsoft, then I was using ClickFunnels, and I think my tech team set up SendGrid as the email provider to connect to it, mm -hmm. and um, I was using it for funnels, and then I was using Facebook ads, and then from there is when I, then I started to think about SEO, and also just like a, a, a more of a real website, not just a funnel. Yeah. And then, so now I have a full WordPress team and we, you know, we focus on the partnerships, but we're starting, I had them build it in a way that could work for SEO. Yeah. And I might, you know more about this than me, but I think doesn't like Google not really like like those sales funnel websites? Like yeah, they, they don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, they don't like like ClickFunnel and those type of thing. No, they want, what you want to have is think about it this way. So, SEO works like this. SEO, a lot of people think it's just on the page website, but it's also off the page backlinking, also your social media content connecting yeah. back in. Because what Google's crawler is doing is let's just say it's, it's um, I don't know, a uh, ghostwriter or um, a book publisher, best book publisher. Yeah. So what it does is it takes that keyword and it goes, all right, who has the most information about uh, best book publisher on their website. Okay, here's the three top websites. Well, let's look off-site. What else is out there? Oh, this guy has way more information than this guy, and this guy has been more active over the last three months. He's publishing something every other day. He must be the expert, because what Google is, it's a free service. So yeah. what they're trying to do is deliver the most quality search for someone. So once they land you on the website, there's the most information that they can find so the, the searcher goes, wow, Google has the best results. It's better than Yahoo. It's better than Bing. It's better than Yelp. It's better than Ask.com yeah. with a K. Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard the other one. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't know that was like a, <laughs> that's a, that's a totally that different one. website. <laughs> <laughs> but but it awesome. takes all that into consideration. And yeah. whoever has that 
Now, the other thing is domain authority, who's been around the longest, blah, 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 blah. So all those things get factored in in their crawler. Yeah. Now, on local, it's the opposite. It's once you plug in your Google map location and it's local, they go, okay, who has a map location here? Because they're thinking that someone's going to go there. Yeah. So they're thinking it from this perspective. Who has the most information on their Google My Business page and their website and their social media in that area that appears to most likely provide that service that that person could just drive to? Yep. So it's two different things, but it's the same concept, just local versus national. Okay. Now, when you speak of the off page, what is that? Are you Backlinking all okay. your social media profiles. The biggest mistake people make is your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your YouTube could all be backlinked in. Those are your own backlinks that you could create. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize, use the same keywords in all your social media posts. Okay. It helps drive up your organic as well on, because Google's looking at all of that yeah. when they spread across to decide who's the authority in this subject. Gotcha, interesting. So now with the, uh, so it's like having a blog and the, because that's what we've been working on is like a blog yeah. and having those keywords to, is the goal kind of essentially to have the keywords sprinkled in, but to become the most valuable article on that topic. Exactly. Basically. But if you can have it on your site yeah. and someone repost that and pick that up as an article for them, oh, okay. that's yeah. what you want to be doing. You want to be pitching your blogs and all that stuff to other people to post for you because that backlink connecting is going to drive you up. Like that's you it. said, entrepreneur.com. When those people yeah. start confirming that what your content is, it's valuable enough to put on their website, Google goes, oh, these guys are experts. Yeah. These guys really know what they're talking about. These guys really know what they're doing. Gotcha. That so it's sense. all of that. Okay. It's, it's like a machine. You just got to keep rowing the boat. Yeah. And the longer you do it, Google's like, all right, they must be really serious <laughs> about this. They must really be in this business. Yeah. Let's push them to the top. Okay. That's what it is. It's just creating an overwhelming case for yourself on Google that you're the expert at that. Yeah, it's just it's such a long term. The problem game. the problem that everybody makes is they want to be the best at everything instead of seeing what is the number one to five like what's the five top keywords that get the majority of the traffic. Let's focus on those. Yeah. Versus they try to get twenty keywords and then every day they got and, and you're just you know it's like you're plugging holes on a boat. You're never going to get yeah. them all. Just find the three or four and just hold them and let it build. Yeah. Don't try to be every keyword. That's the biggest mistake when I sell SEOs. They're like, well, I want 50 keywords. You're like, well, you can't be number one in 50 keywords. Yeah. Even if I did it full time every day for you, there's no way I could do it. So let's pick five. Yeah. And let's take those five and let's be the best at these five that we know are going to get you the greatest amount of traffic. Gotcha. And then let's take all your social media content and build it around the same thing. So everything you're doing, everywhere you're talking, you're talking about the same five keywords on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, da, 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 to where it all ties back to your website and they go, these guys are the experts. Gotcha. Because okay. it's just an AI. It's not a person. Yeah. It's just a software program. And don't they keep like changing the rules? Yeah, they change it every year. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Well, because what happens is they, they realize how people cheat the thing. Like what yeah. a lot of the big thing was like 10 years ago. You put an image and you just put the keyword a hundred times behind the image. Yeah. You know, it'd be like best book, best book publisher, best book publisher, best <laughs> yeah. book publisher. And then in the, in the, in the footer, best head, but like a million times. I'm like, oh, this guy's got it on here a million times. He's number one. <laughs> when in reality, he never even posted anything. It was just a bunch of tricks. Yeah. So that's why they keep unfolding that. And then it becomes, you know, people build up to the top and then they don't do anything. So they want you to stay relevant. They want you to stay active. So it's also based on how active you are, how recent your content is, how fresh is it, right? So it's like there's a, they keep adding things because they keep realizing people figure out a way to cheat their way to the top. Just like Instagram. Yeah. They, they keep realizing, okay, fake followers, fake likes, fake views, fake this. So they keep creating rules to try to like stop us. For so sure. they're like, at least the real people will surface to the top sooner or later. Gotcha. That's what it is. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's what marketers do, right? We yeah, yeah, yeah. Because once you figure out the trick, you're like, oh, I'm not going to do the work. Yeah. I'm just going to do this trick. You know? <laughs> it's working. For sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. I appreciate you, you sharing that. I feel, yeah. I feel like they got a good SEL. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they you know. SEO and yeah. how to write a book. Mm. All right, anything else you want to share? No, no, I'm, I'm good, man. Well, let's just yeah. at least shout out how people can find For you, sure. where they can find you. Uh, so websites, authorsunite.com, and then, you know, obviously I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> and then um, Instagram is probably the best way to just contact me directly. It's yeah. Tyler B. Wagner. Awesome. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thanks thank for you. having me, yeah. bro.